السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الحمد لله صلاة وسلام على رسول الله إن شاء الله we'll choose one or two ayat to talk about Allah says وما أصلنا في قرية من نبي إلا أخذنا أهلها بالبأساء والضراء لعلهم يضرعون ثم بدلنا مكان السيئة الحسنة حتى عفوا وقالوا قد مس آباءنا الضراء والسراء فأخذناهم بغتة وهم لا يشعرون ولو أن أهل القرى آمنوا واتقوا لفتحنا عليهم بركات من السماء والأرض ولكن كذبوا فأخذناهم بما كانوا يكسبون The meaning of this ayat Allah talks about a general, a general law that applies to this dunya whenever he sends his messengers First if the people reject what the messengers came to teach and they did not accept to follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will trial them and will treat them through al-ba'sa wa darra and the meaning of ba'sa and darra meaning that um, hardship meaning hardship الباساء في الاموال والضراء في الابدان hardship whether that is in uh, their money and wealth and their crops and their cattle and everything that relates to material and ضراء is in their bodies in the form of diseases, ailments, pains different kinds of things <coughs> and also could be psychiatric problems depression, many uh, stress, stress and things like this um, when people don't listen this is the first kind of treatment that they get uh, because it is well known that a human being whenever he is in a hardship he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's mentioned in the Quran in multiple places we see this in our own selves right um, we could be doing something wrong and the moment uh, we feel a hardship happening I mean we don't pay attention until we, the hardship happens then we start saying oh I was doing this and I was doing this and we start asking Allah oh Allah help me I will not do this again if you help me I will be straight and things like this Allah mukhlasina lahu deen mentioned this surah and, and the previous surah sorry Allah mukhlasina lahu deen la'in anjana min hadihi la'inakunanna min ashakirin that if you uh, rescue us, we will be very grateful. <coughs> also, Allah says, فَلَمَّا نَجْيَهُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ فَمِنْهُمْ مُقْتَصِدْ وَمَا يَجْحَدُ بِآيَاتٍ إِلَّا كُلَّ فَتَارٍ كَفُورٍ in another surah. <coughs> and he says, I do this to them, not just for inflicting pain and misery on people, but it is for their own good and for, the, for their own sake. لَعَلَّهُمْ so that they come back to me asking for help and when they start asking Allah for help they are acknowledging His existence and His presence and His sovereignty and His control and His mercy and His power and punishment they are acknowledging all this when they start going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they start knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the first uh, that is the first kind of uh, treatment Allah says in the surah uh, Allah says in surah Al-Lamim Sajda um, um, I will give them a taste of the punishment the adna meaning the minor punishment or the punishment that is close by meaning in this dunya before the real punishment because the real punishment there is no way back and there is nothing to rescue from that right and there is no uh, whether the people are grateful or not or they go back to Allah or not to go back to Allah it doesn't it doesn't help at that time right it does not help at that time <coughs> so لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجَعُونَ so that they come back and this is the same meaning لَعَلَّهُمْ يَضَّرَّعُونَ but what if they don't even that hardship does not make them come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that indicates something very bad happening with their souls and their hearts, right, and their fitrah, that they are messed up. We don't know their Lord anymore, even when they are in hardship. And that is something very difficult. Because a lot of the kuffar, even when they are in hardship, they know their Lord, right? 
So uh, how about people who are listening to a true messenger? They should know the Lord better when they are in hardship. He says when they don't listen after all this, what happens? This is the second stage and that's very important to know this stage. He says, Instead of the punishment and the hardship getting worse and worse and worse, because no, it's, not, uh, it's not, no, not going to help them anymore to be in hardship, Allah does the exact opposite. He actually uh, changes everything to what they like. Changes everything to what they like and gives them plenty. Whether that is in their wealth again, or in their health, or in their matah, in their desires, uh, in the way they enjoy life, in their quality of life, Allah gives them more and more and more and more. He says, Hatta Atal. Hatta Atal, and Hatta Tarakul. That they have so much plenty that they don't know what to do with it. They're throwing it away. Hatta Atal. You know, Atal means to leave alone. They have uh, food and the food is staying overnight and they don't eat it and it's staying there and it's thrown in the garbage. They have excess money and they're using it maybe for their fun and for their gambling and for their cruises and things like this and uh, for their desires. Hatta they have so much, so plenty. Um, and also Afaw means, you know when he says, uh, he says, uh, meaning that without paying attention. Meaning that they don't care anymore. They do everything without any worry of any consequence. This is the meaning of Afu. Also, that somebody is just spontaneously enjoying and he doesn't feel that there's a right or wrong. He does the wrong as if he did the right. No fear of guilt and no fear of consequence. This is the meaning of Hatta Afu. And then when somebody reminds them, but remember, Allah did this to you and now He gives you this, so at least you have to wake up. This is, oh, قَدْ مَسَّ أَذَانُ بَرَّعُ وَالسَّرَّةِ He says, no, this is something, this is nature. Look, our fathers and forefathers went through this. They also had hardships and then they had plenty and they had hardships and they had plenty. So, this is a matter of nature, mother nature like they say. Huh? So, nature does this and the history goes on. And they, again, disregard the doing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, when that happens, that is when He takes them. And he takes them suddenly at a time of uh, not, not expecting anything, not expecting any punishment. Because when they are in power, they don't fear anything. They kill and no problem. They don't fear that Allah is going to take them. And they steal people's properties and they don't fear that Allah will punish them. And says, so this is when he takes them, بغتك, meaning that, suddenly, without being expected. He says, when, ولو أن أهل آمنوا He said, if they had done the exact opposite of what they did, meaning that they feared Allah, and they believed in Allah, لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ That I would have provided for them, and he says, barakatin. The word barakah means plenty, but it also means a blessed kind of plenty. A plenty that you use it in for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that increases your iman and improves your, your, your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the meaning of barakah. Because the word barakah is only used for the goodness that connects you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is uh, that continues to multiply because when you have plenty but this plenty is making you closer to Allah it only gets more and after you die it gets more and more and more right because Allah gives you the reward and it does not get cut off suddenly anything that gets cut off suddenly cannot be a barakah cannot be a barakah and anything that cuts you off from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a barakah because Allah said in Surah Naam for, for, for the kuffar uh, he said فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ he didn't say barakah he says فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ I opened everything for them and that is not barakah meaning that he gave them plenty in money plenty in beauty plenty in, in power in health in wealth so this is different from فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتِ in the case that Allah is pleased but فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ meaning that you have plenty but it disconnects you from Allah you are powerful but you are not safe this is true you feel this, these people who have the biggest power in the world and they think they have the biggest power in the world they are not safe in their own homes they are not safe in their own streets and cities uh, exactly subhanallah and they are not safe on their own wealth and they are not safe they have plenty but still they want to secure everything everything they want to put more security more insurance on, on this all their money they want to insure it with more money so this is different and, uh, and there is no rida this is another thing they have plenty but they are not content 
And see if this is the difference between the plenty and the barakah. They have, but they're not content. They want more and more and more. And they want what's in this guy's hand and what's in this guy's hand. And they're never uh, satisfied. And then it gets cut off suddenly. Because after that, there's nothing. It's the exact opposite happens to them. <laughs>